To what do you attribute all that recent strength? Is it the Fed's dovish stance? Is it optimism over trade? Is it something else? Well, a lot of it's simply that we're seeing a rebound from uh, a big, big sell-off uh, at the end of the year. And uh, there, the market was oversold in the sense that there was you know, the expectation that the U.S. was facing an imminent recession. That proved not to be the case. There was a lot of concern about uh, trade war between the U.S. and China that has at least been put on the shelf, and they're continuing to talk. And like you mentioned, there was concern about um, a hawkish Fed, which is now turned dovish. And so, you, you know, whatever other issues are out there in terms of uh, slowing growth and, and uh, uh, soft patch for earnings, at least, you know, we don't, we're not in a situation where the Fed is, uh, looks like it's going to tip the economy over the edge. So the Fed is actually going to be patient. So all those things add up to a more benign environment, despite the fact that there are still plenty of things to be concerned about. Like what? Well, we are entering. We've we, we have a soft patch for earnings. Uh, we're going to have to earn our way out of that. Um, you know, Brexit uh, you mentioned uh, in your summary uh, about uh, uh, the talks. It's very unclear where that's going to end out. We could be at a hard Brexit on Friday, or we could be looking at a one-year extension. All that uncertainty is hanging as a uh, like a cloud over the UK and and the EU. Uh, we have slowing China. I mean, there's no lack of things to be concerned about. Um, the way I would put it and the way I put it in a quarterly note to clients just the other day is that uh, I grew up in, in the Midwest, in the United States, and I always knew the difference between a tornado watch and a tornado warning. Uh, a watch is when you know, conditions are potentially favorable to a tornado and you just keep your eyes out. Um, and a warning is when you actually see a funnel cloud. We're in watch mode. You know, where there are a lot of things out there that could potentially go in a, either a positive or negative direction. And, uh, but we're not seeing, you know, when I go down the list of leading indicators for a U.S. recession, which is really what, what caused the sell-off uh, in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, I don't see many indications of, of an imminent yeah. uh, uh, well, downturn. Pa Patrick, so. with regard to Brexit, three days to go. I mean, we may not be at the house falling on the witch point just <laughs> yet, but people maybe can hear that tornado coming, can't they? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they like to play things close to the edge, don't they? Um, so You think they're going to figure it out? I mean, is Dorothy going to find a way home, Patrick? So our expectation all along has been that there would be an extension because the U.K. is not really prepared and the EU doesn't really want a hard Brexit. Uh, but like I say, they're playing it right to the edge, and it's very difficult to say uh, whether, you know, it looks like the, the, the U.K. is going to ask for a short extension, uh, the EU doesn't want to give them a short extension because of the parliamentary elections coming up. They either want the UK to participate in those elections or not. They want to offer them a longer extension. Uh, we'll see whether that can be reconciled. If they crash out on Friday, uh, the way I view it is it's kind of like a natural disaster uh, in the sense that there's a lot of short-term disruption, whether or not that actually takes the UK economy off track. I mean, the UK has been the U.K. economy has actually been pretty resilient, uh, despite all the uncertainty that Brexit has created. L let me ask you this way. I'm not going to ask you to recommend individual stocks. I'm throwing Apple out as an example. Does Apple care about Brexit? I Does think Exxon everybody... Does ExxonMobil care about Brexit? Does Walmart care? I'm just saying, I wonder if people are going to stop buying these huge cap U.S. companies because of Brexit. What do you think? So there, I don't think they're going to... I don't think they're going to stop buying them because of uh, a headline about Brexit. Um, I think what could potentially cause headwinds to this market is that uh, you have a slowdown in Europe. Uh, anything that rattles that cage, any additional shock is unwelcome, uh, whether that be Brexit, whether that be U.S. tariffs, which is another headline from, from yesterday uh, against the EU. Um, and that could have an impact on earnings. And it's really earnings uh, coming out of a soft fourth quarter going into a first quarter in which we hope to see improvement, um, European earnings uh, matter for U.S. companies. And so if that affects their earnings outlook or their earnings performance, that is what would impact this market.